Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining this week's um, Makerspace interview and lecture series. Um, I'm Ellen Lumpkin Brown, and I am really thrilled today that we're going to be talking with the executive director of Glassroots um, and CEO, Barbara Heisler, and she's going to really help us to understand um, where Glassroots began, where it is today, where we're going in the future, and some of the really exciting things that we have um, on board that this Makerspace series actually falls into. So, hi, Barbara, and thanks. Hey, Ellen, great to be with you. Um, let me begin uh, by saying my name is Ellen Lumpkin Brown, and on normal days, you can find me in the classroom at Glassroots teaching our business um, classes and entrepreneurship classes to teenagers and adults. Um, Glassroots is a glass art studio in Newark, New Jersey that works to ignite and build the cultural and economic vitality of our community through the glass arts. Since you can't visit our studios at this time, each day we're bringing activities to you uh, through Facebook and Instagram and of course on our website. So please be sure to sign up for our email list to get our full week schedule ahead of time by sending your email address to info at glassroots.org and then be sure to follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. I want to add that we at Glassroots want to acknowledge what's going on in our country at this time and at Glassroots we intend to keep making our art in support of community and of social justice, to hold programs that create economic opportunity, to tell our students that they can be agents of change, and to open their eyes to opportunities to rise up and fully embrace their potential. Every time I read that, I get a little chill. It is really inspiring. It is. It really is. So today, um, as I said, we'll be talking with Barbara Heisler. Um, Barbara and I have known each other for a very long time, but I've been fortunate to, well, 2003, right? <laughs> because we were children. We were just we were children. children. Yes. Um, but it's been my privilege and pleasure to work with Barbara as um, the leader of Glassroots over the last five years, I think now. And um, especially as Glassroots begins thinking about some new ways of being. Um, so Barbara, again, welcome. And um, would you like to start off by um, saying a little bit about what you'd like the um, audience to know about you? And then a little bit about the history of Glassroots. Sure. Well, I, I just want to say that um, your addition to the staff about five years ago um, came two years after I joined. Um, so I actually celebrated my seventh anniversary on July 1st, wow. which is kind of crazy since I uh, was actually hired as an interim director. So in the nonprofit field, interim leadership is, is a fairly new idea at least seven years old, right? But um, the idea is that when organizations are going through a transition uh, from a long-term director or changing focus, that an interim leader comes in and helps to do a reset, helps to help the board understand where the organization is at a particular point in time, helps the staff to understand the new direction um, sometimes they're brought in to make difficult decisions about staffing or program changes. Um, mm. But for me, it was that um, that Glassroots had gone through, we had our, um, our initial founding director for 10 years, and um, the organization hired someone um, immediately after Pat Ketten Ring's um, 10 year uh, uh, presence at Glassroots. And, um, and that it was just not a great transition for the organization. Um, probably had nothing to do with who the individual was um, or his skill level. It really had to do with the organization 
where the organization was at that moment and not kind of taking time to stop and do a reset. Um, mm -hmm. What often happens in organizations after the founding director leaves or the founder of the organization leaves is that organizations either try to replace that person with someone exactly like their founder. Right, right. Or exactly opposite that founder, depending on what was happening at that moment, without really considering who they truly need in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's what an, a, an interim director allows an organization to do is to figure out, you know, what's their direction? What are they going to do? Mm -hmm. So, so I was brought to Glassroots. I was asked to come on board. I was doing um, interim leadership with different organizations. And I was brought on board and I knew of Glassroots, but not deeply. Um, and what I found uh, was just amazing to me. It is um, really um, such an interesting organization and had such potential that it wasn't living up to. Mm. Um, not because not, not by anyone's fault, but because it did what a lot of nonprofits do. It, it kind of fell into its, its comfortable place. Mm -hmm. And so Glassroots was doing wonderfully impactful after-school programs. There was a summer um, internship program for high school students. There was an academic year-long internship program where students came and they did different activities at Glassroots, whether it was in the office or in the studios. Um, but what I found was that there was incredible opportunity um, and it just needed a little bit of fine tuning. And I thought, okay, great. I'll be here six months, a year. <laughs> I'll help the board kind of set in place a, a new strategic direction and then I'll be off to my next project. Right. And I'll be able to watch from afar you know, where this great organization goes. Um, the joke is I tried to leave four times. And, uh, <laughs> it uh, broke you in. They did, but, you know, it's all good, right? It's, yes. you know, the more I got involved in the conversations about what Glassroots could be um, as it entered its teenage years, um, the more I realized that it was a great place to be. And I've really, the last seven years have been challenging professionally, but just incredibly wonderful. Um, mm. So uh, we could talk about what's happened over those seven years and, um, and why you came to Glassroots, and, um, which has been part of my joy and um, and where we think it's going. So that's, it'll be fun to have this conversation. Oh, that's great. That's great. And I think, you know, how special it is to come into some place and to be able to see, oh my gosh, there's so much potential here. Um, it's not always the case when you walk into an interim um, position. So. Right. I've been, in, I've been on the other side of this. I've been in places where it was really the end of the organization's life. Right. And that's, that's really difficult. Um, happy to say that wasn't the case here. That's right. Wasn't the case here. And that you could, you could know that because you know what the other looks like. So yeah. um, that, that's fantastic. So, well, let's start with um, what some of those things were that you saw, those sparks, and, um, and you know, how you took those to the next step together with the board. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think some of those sparks include the board. Um, you know, it's, nonprofits are structured in very uh, different ways than most organizations. Um, one thing that people don't realize is that no one that actually works at the institution owns the organization. Right. Um, so who owns a nonprofit? The state does. The state owns a nonprofit and we exist to serve the people in that state or that region or however, whatever we set as our service area. Um, but be, 
in return, we get this nonprofit status. So we don't pay sales tax. Um, the organization does not pay income tax on its earnings as long as the work that it does is within the mission of the organization. Mm -hmm. And the mission is approved. And the mission is, um, right, is submitted as part of the incorporation of the nonprofit and the state. Right. So, um, so, not, so at the time that I came on board, um, Glassroots, I don't have the exact mission statement in front of me, but it really focused on serving um, youth um, in an educational capacity using glass as that vehicle. Um, and so that was, the, that was the first spark. What an interesting vehicle, glass, mm. why glass, right? I just, I immediately saw the allure. I mean, not only is it um, a complex um, material to work with, which right. has own challenges and, and ability to kind of take people on a journey, but it has, um, it's different. You know, you sew, um, other people knit. Those are all incredibly wonderful crafts that engage you and teach you something about yourself. Mm -hmm. But they don't necessarily challenge the normal teenager that's walking down the street. Mm -hmm. But when you say, come into my door, um, young person, I can introduce you to this art form called glass blowing. And you say there's glass and there's fire, and there's 2200 degrees. You know, at a minimum, you have somebody kind of, oh, I'll take a look at that. Right. Um, they'll walk in the door. And that's the biggest thing about working with teens and young adults is getting them to walk in the door. And so that's why it's such an interesting medium. Then once you get them through the door, um, glass, oh my God, it challenges every part of you. It challenges your creativity. It, it challenges your, your, your self-awareness, mm -hmm. your ability to take risks. I mean, you are, you know, face to face with a fire and uh, 2,200 degrees of heat or, or more in our scientific glass studio, it's 3,000 degrees. And, and our staff basically puts their trust in you as a student to, um, to listen, to learn, and then be able to manipulate that material. That's, that's incredible. It's an honor. It's a, a value. It communicates something mm -hmm. to people that we work with that we know you can do this. And frankly, if you can do this, there's a whole lot you can do in your life. It's so true. It's right? so true. So, so the, the vehicle. We had the board. The board who totally believed in this organization. Um, there was a glass artist on the board but most of the, the board were made up of people that just really cared about young people in Newark. They really cared about Newark. They cared about education. Um, and they really believed in the organization. And boy, so we have a great vehicle. We have a great board. And then we have the staff. And I will tell you that Glassroots staff is second to none. And I've met a lot of people in the arts. I've met a lot of glass people around the country. And this is not to put them at all down, but our staff is really remarkable. They, um, they are each talented artisans themselves mm -hmm. who could be out creating art and selling it in galleries and gift shops and you know privately, but instead they've chosen to work their art with other people as teachers and instructors. And and that's pretty remarkable. That's pretty selfless. Yeah. Um, no, it's and, absolutely so special. I have to I, I have had the same feeling because and and not every 
person who is expert at what they do, or I mean, we're always all learning, but who's really good at what they do can understand how to communicate that to someone else, how to teach to, to someone else with all those other things that Glass offers. I mean, you have to have an open mind if you're going to work with Glass because it's challenging everything. And the instructor the instructing the instructors have such a gift for breaking that down and making it accessible um, that people can can sit down and in not that long a period of time realize they're doing something that they never thought that they would do in life right they're very special and and one of the things that's really important about our staff is that they are um, a good number of them are from the community that we work in, um, but all of them are of the community that we mm. work in, right? Like part of their gift is that they're willing to, you know, allow each other and our students to kind of see their journey through glass, mm. um, which then makes it very authentic for our students. Right. So, so that's been great. So. So that, that's what I saw when I got there. Um, but then I also saw that we weren't necessarily taking advantage of all those gifts. And where that came um, to be very clear to me was um, as I left at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, so Glass Roots is currently in this 5,700 square foot space on two different floors of mm -hmm. the building and the administrative offices are upstairs and the studios are downstairs. Um, so at the end of the day, I would um, go down the stairs and stop in the studio to say good night. And there were always these young people around. I mean, it's five o'clock, it's 5.30. We're getting ready to close up. And there are these young people there. And I was kind of like, who are these young people? I knew they weren't our current students. Um, but it took me a, you know, a couple of weeks to figure out who they are. Remember, this is now seven years ago when I first came to Glass Roots. Right. And um, I found out that they were graduates. They were young people that had graduated from our programs, which at the time only went through high school. Mm -hmm. um, and the, at Glass Roots, they had found people that listened to them, respected them, um, wanted to know them. Mm -hmm. Um, but they had graduated from high school, so they were no longer in our programs. They no longer had their guidance counselors. They no longer had their teachers or their coaches. In some cases, they no longer had their foster homes. Mm -hmm. um, they went through a lot of loss, and, and they didn't have a lot of direction. They didn't really know what, was the, what the next step was to take. And I thought, gosh, that's what we're missing, right? We bring these young people in our programs to a certain place, and then they don't really know how to launch. So what could we do? Like, mm. this was what was needed in our community. They were, they were telling me very clearly, this is what was needed. That um, young people, 18 to 24, 25, that hadn't gone on to college, or hadn't gone into the military or into trade school, they didn't really know what it was to do. That the aspirational jobs were, were kind of low level, low paying jobs that didn't lead to a, a real future. Mm -hmm. And they weren't excited about those, those jobs, um, but they didn't really, you know, at that point they weren't in school, they couldn't go talk to their guidance counselors. They, they didn't really know how to move forward in the next place. Right. Right. Um, and so then I sat down and had a conversation with you, if you remember, mm -hmm. you had a cup of coffee. And um, I remembered your background in apprenticeship programs and in workforce development programs. And I thought, Ellen, you think you can come have a couple of conversations with us about what our next steps organizationally could be so that we could help these young people? make that step. Mm. Um, and as they say, it was the beginning of a beautiful relationship. <laughs> because um, we did, we launched uh, in our first year, 
the um, Scientific Glass Program. We got a three-year grant from a, a foundation called the Varus Foundation that helped us really work and fine tune that program. The second year, we launched our bead shop program, our uh, craft entrepreneurship program, which if you think of um, the scientific glass program as leading to a career, um, the craft entrepreneurship program, the bead shop program is intended to lead to um, a business, whether it's part-time or becomes something else. And whether it's glass based or not, the idea was to learn skills to be able to create supplemental income or to create something new. Mm -hmm. um, and then our third year, we developed the fellowship program, which we run um, for three years in partnership with a, a very highly esteemed craft school in North Carolina. And this year we'll be moving to working with another very highly esteemed craft school here in New Jersey, which um, uses the studio experience to emulate what it's like to go away to college for a year mm. and um, brings together all those other skills that resilience, persistence, communication, cooperation, collaboration, all those skills that glass teaches mm -hmm. um, and helps a young person make that leap from not knowing what their future is going to bring to going to going into college and creating another path. Right. And so all of these three programs are part of our college and career readiness programs um, are really the, the way that we've created that bridge um, for young people to move into the next part of their lives. Mm -hmm. Right. It feels good when you lay it all out like that. It's, it's great. And I just want to add too with the, um, the fellowship program that the students also bring, what is it, nine credits, college credits into their freshman year, which is so exciting that because often these are the students who are used to being behind or left out. Um, never the ones who are considered as having any kind of a experience or leg up. And now they're going into college with, you know, with some currency, with, with some work under their belt already that someone else has said is college worthy. Right. It's a great thing for them. Yeah. So 18 students have gone through that program and um, uh, so far. And uh, there'll be another 12 this year. Um, and of those 18, um, I think 16 of them went on or were in the process of completing their associates, or some of them stayed on to earn bachelors. Um, so it's, you know, or have gone on to, to work or um, enroll in, a, in a, a different, not a college experience, but a, a, a post-secondary trade pro school program. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, um, you know, it's been, it's been a great joy, right, of developing these programs and, and helping Glassroots kind of step up to its, um, its mid-teen years. <laughs> um, and so now the challenge we have yes. is we're, hey, we're facing adulthood as an organization. Um, we're starting our 20th year, really amazing. Mm. And um, part of that transition to adulthood is that we're leaving our 5,700 square foot space. Our, ne our nest. Our nest where we're flying. <laughs> and we're flying not too far away, just a third of a mile down the street, but we're gonna land in 25,000 square feet, which is, Unbelievable. Yes. <laughs> um, and hopefully that's going to be the place that, that Classroots, you know, sees its next phase of life to really live up to the mission that the board adopted a few years ago, which is part of what set us on this path, by the way. I kind of skipped that little step that the board did some deep work around um, strategy, right? When we started talking about the fact 
that um, that we weren't living up to our potential, we started saying, well, what is our potential? What is it that we can do? Mm -hmm. And so the board made a really bold decision to change our mission statement. And that mission statement currently reads that Glassroots ignites and builds the creative and economic vitality of Greater Newark with a focus on those same youth and young adults. Mm -hmm. but through the transformative um, power of the glass art experience. And every decision that's been made, those three programs I just described to you, the decision to move, the decision to what happens in this new space, mm -hmm. all stems from that incredibly powerful mission statement mm -hmm. that the board adopted. It's been our, our, our beacon, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's lit the path to move forward. Um, and so the, the embodiment of that vision is the, our new worker space program, which is, um, you know, something that you've been working on quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And in fact, these lectures that you've been giving during our um, time of um, containment, <laughs> Um, are, are an essential part of, of that program. They are the ability to bring experts to people locally and, well, as we learn, not so locally now. We can kind of spread our wings and, you know, people from all over the world have been watching you on your, in your lecture series. Um, thousands of people have been watching you in your oh lecture my gosh. series. And, um, and we, you know, take that knowledge of, of business, of entrepreneurship, of um, craft entrepreneurship, of art making, of, um, you know, all the skills that you teach when you're in the classroom. And we are bringing it to this community of craft entrepreneurs and small business owners um, virtually and pretty soon in a space at Glassroots as well, where um, people who don't have the ability to have a home-based business that runs out of their home or need that additional support of having someone over their shoulder every once in a while whispering, you can do this. What other skills do you need? What other tools do you need? We can right. help get them. Um, and so our worker space is gonna be that little virtual voice in the ear and um, an in-person voice in the ear for, you know, about 10 hours a year when we're in our new space. Mm -hmm. So from words to action is really quite amazing. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And um, I think that there is such a moment right now for um, thinking about everything kind of differently because we've all done over these last months things that we didn't think we would or could and it makes you say well why not for um, for other things and you and I have just been emailing this morning about um, all of the glass vials that are, going to, that are going to be needed to hold the COVID vaccines and our question is, where is the spot for our young people? Exactly. In that development. Exactly. Um, so I mean, that's all of this creative and economic vitality, right? Yeah. Glass is kind of where it hits. And so, boy, our scientific glass program, which is also going to have a home in our new space mm -hmm. as a working shop, um, will not only create jobs for young people and job training for young people, but my goodness, what an opportunity we have to serve not only our community, but the world and help figure out how we can have a, a role in, in addressing this shortfall. That's right. Who knew there was a shortfall of glass files? Well, it, it, with what is going to be needed, it I think it's going to be something that will be going on for a long time. Um, 
Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, know, a, I think it's that, it's that funny word. You know how words have, words all have their time. So the word right now is pivot. Right? <laughs> yes. Like, I don't think I ever used the word pivot before six months ago. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's what we've been doing, bringing our programs online, doing distance learning. And frankly, what we learned is that we can enhance all of our programs mm -hmm. for virtual or distance programming. Um, and so now it's part of us. It's not going away. It's not like, oh, we open our studios and we stop. Right. Or go back to the way that things were. We're not. We're not. Um, but, you know, pivot also means you, you look at for new opportunities and new ways. Um, you know, none of us were going to let class roots go away. Mm. And so we were all, our board, our staff, our community was all there to make sure that we did a pivot. Um, and I think our role is to make sure that everyone else does too. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I did, did want to ask, do you want to say um, a few more words about the um, new space um, in general? Because we've talked about the economic development programs, um, but we're continuing and growing the art-based programs as well, or integrating both together. Right. So one of our challenges in our current space is um, that our spaces are all really small. And so we want to make sure that we have the opportunity to expose as many people to this really fascinating medium of glass art as possible. Mm. Um, one of the ways that that has been challenging to us is that we do field trips. And if you're coming from um, a town that you get on a school bus to come to Glass Roots, um, which we know is gonna happen again, um, that, you know, in the past, we could only bring 25 students at a time. That's half a school bus. And very few school districts would allow um, a class trip with 25 students. Mm -hmm. So we said in our new space, every one of our studios has to be able to seat a full classroom of students. So we will now have a flame shop for lamp working and flame working, a flat shop for mosaics and fused glass work, and a hot shop for glass blowing, which can each accommodate a full classroom of students, 30 students in each shop at a time. Um, we will also have our photography studio, our packing and shipping area, our cold working shop, um, a gallery, um, other exhibit space, and um, a real smart classroom that not only our students will benefit from, but other community organizations can use as meeting and conference space. Um, our staff will be together on one floor. <laughs> Yay! So at the end of the day, nobody has to go downstairs or upstairs to say goodnight. We'll be able to just wave to each other um, and smile as we leave for the day. Um, and then we'll have our maker space, our workers space for craft entrepreneurship and our scientific glass space. So boy, we're launching into adulthood. We're buying the house, we're doing the whole bit. <laughs> At the same time, we're like, you know, marriage, house, babies. Right, all, all in the first year. All in the first year. <laughs> <laughs> um, but boy, are we excited. So. You know, the plan is, and of course, everything is in flux because of COVID, but we fully expect that we'll be in that space by the end of this calendar year. And in the new year, um, when everyone's healthy and we can all come back together, uh, we'll do that. And we'll do that in a really grand way. We'll have an amazing open house celebration. Mm. We'll do robust programming on site. And now, because of our pivot, we'll continue our virtual programming just to bring more people in lots of different ways into the grassroots world and circle and sphere. <laughs> so it's, 
it's exciting. I mean, I think, um, you know, the last few months have not been easy for anybody. No. Um, they've not been easy for, for us that have been working in isolation. And they haven't been easy for our friends that uh, either lost people that were near and dear to them or were frontline workers. Um, we're all kind of suffering from trauma. And the other pivot that Glassroots is making is that we're um, putting kind of a trauma-informed lens on all of our programs. Mm. We've been working on uh, designing a program, and this was pre-COVID. Uh, we started working on designing a trauma-informed program to work with, with victims of violence in, in Newark and our areas with the university hospital that work is going to serve us well as we yes it is um you know come back together in a way that we re recognize that we're all going to need healing um so our healing hurts program and our trauma-informed lens on all of our programs will make sure that classroots is a is a healthy place for us all to be together um as we work through our future together so oh yeah. Good stuff coming forward. Yeah, what a great note to um, wrap up on thinking of Glassroots so actively as a healing place um, that, that will kind of recognize what we're not even able to articulate yet because we've all collectively really been through something. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's great. Um, well, let me, is there anything else that you want to add? I, I think you've covered so much. Well, I just want to thank you um, for everything that you brought and to your thousands of viewers to know, <laughs> to know that, um, you know, you're just such a integral part of our programs and these uh, weekly lectures have just been really phenomenal, Ellen. And uh, I've learned a lot. I've learned about, um, the quilting bee and the, <laughs> you know, entrepreneurs near and far. Um, and thank you for this gift that you bring to us and that you'll continue to bring. Oh, geez. Well, thank you so much. And um, it has really been wonderful learning about different things and having a, you know, sort of a platform to talk about them or to bring other people to the fore. And in fact, I'm hoping that next week we have um, one of our favorite people who can help us to think about financial planning and financial literacy for small entrepreneurs. Now that we've got this still time, let's come out strong. And uh, so getting, getting really real <laughs> about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, it's what we have planned for next week. Great. Great. So thanks again so much. And as I wrap up, I just want to um, say to everyone that we are so thankful at Glassroots that we're able to offer these programs free of charge to the community at large. Um, that really gives us joy. But if you are able to help us and make a donation and you've heard about our really incredible plans for the next few years coming up um, and starting really soon, you'd like to support us, we would certainly be appreciative. Um, you can just go to glassroots.org. There's a donate button there. It's super easy to use and we would again, appreciate it very much. Um, but we're also happy that we can do this as is. So Barbara, again, thank you so much. And I'll see you sometime pretty soon. I will see you soon. Okay, thanks, thanks so much. Bye-bye.